Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we are going to look at JPA many to many, and this is for some for some weird reason that this is the one that the people uh, most often think this is the most difficult relation um, to actually set up. But it's actually easiest one to set up because you can only set up this relation um, in your Sprint project one way. So let us just jump right into it. Um, many to many is um, yeah that is when you have uh, both entities can actually point to a lot of the other entities and I have an example right here I have some crew member so let's say that I have a crew member this crew member has an ID this crew member has a name and then this crew member have uh, can have a lot of skills so the, we, we can have a lot of skills in this crew member and there's a join right here, but let us save that uh, just a little bit. And then we have a skill entity. So we have a skill entity that has an IDE, which is unique and also generated, just like the ID on the, on the crew member. Then we have a description right here. And then we have a list of crew members because uh, the, a lot of crew mem members can actually have the, the, the skill math, for instance. instance. So that means that uh, one skill can be assigned to uh, multiple crew members and one crew member can have multiple skills. This is a classic many-to-many -many relation that we need to, to build to, uh, yeah, to link these two together uh, database-wise and it is so easy because there's only one way to do it. First of all, as soon as we uh, mention something that is not a, a native or wrapper to a native like a list of skills, then we need to use the annotation and say and tell JPA what kind of uh, what kind of relation is this. And in this situation, it's a many to many. If it had been another kind of relation, then you would have to uh, do use one of those, of course. Uh, watch my other videos about JPA, then you can try to see how to set up the one to many, for, for instance, uh, instead. This is a many to many, so you just say many to many like this, and then you use uh, the annotation. Join table. This means that we are creating a new table that actually joins the two other tables together. This new table is uh, is named crew member skills, and uh, we have uh, we have two columns in this join table. One column that actually the one column that points to the ID of the crew member, and another column that actually points to the ID of the skill. Um, of the skill that needs to be connected to this crew member. And this is the inverse join columns right here. And again, this is, this is the ID of the skill, this is the ID of the crew member. Actually, just to, just to, just to make it a bit more explicit, and I would actually like to change this a bit. So I would like to write crew ID right here. Like this, and you look, I use capital case right here, and here use underscore. That's because I'm using H2 uh, database, and that will automatically be converted. Camera case will automatically be converted into snake case, which is the underscore that you see instead of the capital I up here. Um, okay, so then I also need to change skill. This was just uh, something I just thought of now, just to make it a bit more explicit. This, this means I need to stop my server that I, I have actually already started my server. Um, so, so yeah. So this is this, this is the the setup. So if I go to skill, then um, you, if you watch my other videos, then you would know that you should only mention the the, the relation on one side. So there's actually one side that's the parent, and this, in this situation right here, it's a crew member. You could have you could have chosen the skill just as well, but I just chose crew member to be the parent entity. Um, and this uh, this is why we have the this is where we have the, the the description and the definition of the of the relation. Then so if I go to skill, then I can I, I will still say that it's a many to many. I need to say that it's many to many because I have a property that is not a native or a wrapped native. So that means that I have to to tell KP what kind of uh, what kind of mapping is this? Uh, sorry, yeah, what kind of relation is, is this? This is a many to many relation. And then I say, and then I tell KPA, this has already been mapped on the other side, but with the with the property name skills. So that means that the, if you go to the other side, that that is the crew member, then we have a property name skills right here, and that is where the the the, the relation has been defined, and that is that is how we do that. So at many to many, and then we say that the, we have already mapped this, so we don't want to uh, repeat that information. Then I've added something else on it. This is a string exclude, and this is JSON ignore. That's because this is one is because I use Lumbach, and that means that my to string uh, method is being generated automatically. And this this will actually uh, end up in an infinite loop. If you go from, if you want to print out your crew member, then first of all you you will print up your out your crew member. Then the, the, all of the skills would then be printed out for, of the crew member. And then uh, if if you did not have this exclude right here, then each of the skills uh, crew members that would then be printed out again, and that would uh, end up 
up with an infinite loop. And the same story with the JSON ignore. If you try to expose, um, if you want to expose this as JSON, then uh, you do not want the JSON uh, JSON uh, serializer uh, to actually go back again to crew members and start serializing that again. Then again, you will get an infinite loop. So yeah, yeah uh, but that was a side story. So this is only if you oh, this is only if you want to expose it uh, in your REST API for uh, like uh, in in your uh, in your REST controllers. And best practice is actually not to expose your entities in your REST controllers. Create some DTOs instead. Then then you definitely uh, would uh, avoid situations like this. And then you also also could also get rid of some of the annoying annotations like this and ignore. Um, I think that's actually it. Yeah. Then I have created a class to actually create. So whenever my Spring application has started, then I have, uh, this is a component right here. So when this component has been created, then we have a post construct right here. This means that this method would then be called. And this again means that I will actually have, uh, I will actually create the three skills. Usually you would actually start with creating your child objects and then inside your parent object, then you can then use your child objects because now they already have an ID. If they did not have an ID, if they were not uh, persisted yet, then you cannot uh, do, do what we're doing right here. So a good thing is to save and persist the, your child objects so they get an ID and then you can add them like this crew member and I have a crew member, member, member named Mike which has the skills of math and flying and then we have Jane uh, who has math, flying and dodging asteroids, yeah, avoiding asteroids. And then we have Lena who has just flying. Um, so as you can see right here, uh, yeah, this is a many-to-many -many relation, and the same uh, skill is actually being applied to uh, multiple uh, multiple crew members, and yeah. So now let us try to start up the application and see what actually happens, because we want to, of course, to look into the database, and it's easy with, um, if you use a H2, oh, now I created an error somewhere, yeah. I created an error, that, and that is because I just, that is the, the thing that we just changed on the fly. Crew ID, skill ID, and what does it say here? It cannot, and many, yeah, so let's go back to skill ID right here, and map by skills. It complains a bit here, what does it say? Let us just check it out. Um, crew member skills, and then we have the crew ID. Then we have the skill ID. And what is the complaint about? Crew member skills. And it does not say why. Crew ID in, in table, crew member is, is related. Okay. Crew ID. It's because I mixed these two right here. So we have the reference and we have the and we have the inverse and we have the join column right there. Let us see if this helped a bit. This is why it's good to be explicit, right? I uh, still says I cannot find it, so... Oh, there was, this was not it, it was correct here. Crew ID. <coughs> Let us just name the column right here, so name equals to crew underscore ID. I just want to be explicit with everything right now. So here we have the ID, crew ID. And we do the same on the skill level right here. We say this is skill ID. And it should actually be fine, right? Skill ID and crew ID. Maybe it's because I've already created this table actually. Okay, now it's actually happy. Okay, so now we are actually happy. Uh, now that we were explicit, so it's 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 very good to be explicit sometimes. Also, when you are, when you mention this add column right here, 
This means that then, uh, then the column name would be uh, exactly as you say right here. This means that you can actually have a you can have a property name right here that is uh, something different from your column uh, names if you want to. Of course, it usually would just give confusion. Uh, but in this situation, I want this uh, column ID to be equal to this um, to this property right here. So let us uh, let us go to a browser because now. The application actually start up, so let us go and look at uh, if you have it, you can actually expose H2 console in your application. Uh, so that means that I have actually access to the database. H2 is a memory database. This means every time I start up my application, then uh, H2 memory database will also be started up. And if you go to your application the promises in Spring, then you can say that you actually want to enable the console with these two lines right here. Um, you can also add some security so other your colleagues cannot uh, access uh, your H2 console if you want to, and you can t define if you want to have some tracing on right here. These are the, the yeah, this is the username and password for your, and this is the location, the URL for your uh, for your memory database, and this is the name of your database itself, space in this situation right here, and this is the dialect H2 dialect is the right setting right there. As usual, I will upload this to GitHub, so you can just take the project down if you want to try it out yourself. Um, then we have, yeah, so we have some crew members right here. Let us, let us just select from crew members. I have Mike, Jane, and Lena. Those right there. And then we have some skills. And press play again. Oh, that was not the one I want to show right now. Let me just go to skills. So we have the skill table right there. Math, flying, and asteroid. Uh, avoid asteroids. So this means if I want to then join these two tables together, then I can join them by by saying uh, select star from skill, and this could be an S. That's, that's just the alias. Then I don't have to write too much. Then we can have a crew member, crew member, uh, yes, crew member, and this could just be a C. And then we also want the join table that is the crew member skills. This one right here, uh, CMS crew member skills, right there. And then I can actually connect these with a where sentence like where S dot skill id equal to skill id equal to um, and then we have this cms dot skill id right there and then we have the <clears throat> then we have the crew member dot uh, crew id equal to cms dot crew id like this. What happened there? Column skill id not found. Okay, so let me just let me just look right here. Crew member skills right there. Crew members. It got this weird name, skills, skill, ID, and crew members, crew ID. Ah, okay, it's because it has, it has the entity in front. That is actually okay, that's okay. So that means that we will actually just uh, add that. We'll just add that to the SQL. And because it's web, then I have to type it all again. Thank you very much for that. And actually, uh, yeah. Let us just type it all again. Mm, let me just see if I can do it a bit faster by pressing some uh, some table names right here. Crew member and crew member skill. Yeah, we can. So, comma S C CMS and then where. S dot skill ID equal to CMS dot skill skill ID and S not not the CMS dot crew member crew ID equal to C dot crew ID like this. Let me just mark it all and then copy it so we have it for later. Then we'll press play. And look what we get here. So here we get a cool 
joint between the two tables over here. I have my, my, my name Mike here, so here. So Mike here is flying, Mike here is Marth, and we can see that my crew ID is 9, and the skill ID is 6 for Marth and the 7 for flying. And Jane has Marth, Jane has flying, Jane has avoid asteroids, and uh, Lina also has flying. Awesome. So this is actually yeah, this is how to connect the um, this is how to connect the um, the, the interstices, the tables, and um, let me just I'll place that in the readme file right here. Um, join uh, join skills with crew members like this, and then the skills there. So if, if anyone is interested. So that's actually it. It, uh, it cannot be more simple, right? Okay, of course I was, uh, yeah, I goofed up a bit, uh, um, yeah, during this demonstration right here. That was because I changed the crew ID on on the, on the fly. I should have, I should, you should never think so, change things like an ID is is quite important, right, on the fly. But yeah, we uh, we succeeded. I'm proud of myself. Skills right here, crew members right here, and many to many. It is the easiest uh, relation that you can deal with. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for all of your comments. Have a great evening and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.